Hi there everyone and welcome to this week's market update. Don't forget that any advice contained within this presentation is general only, so it is entitled to your particular circumstances. You need to decide for yourself if it's appropriate to you. It's amazing what one week can do to the market, isn't it? Why, right? So it was a very different conversation we we're having about a week ago, and now we're back down into potential correction territories, right? Uh, and in correction territory in the US markets, well and truly into it. Uh, so let's just start with our market. There's a lot of talk to talk about here on this video today. So uh, starting point, okay, always just want to go back and reflect on the longer term trend in times like this. And you can sort of see the trend is starting to break down okay so you know it doesn't matter how I draw this line there's a potential break of this trend happening right now um, so I wouldn't call this a bear market just yet though guys right the reason why I say that is for me to call this a bear market I need to see the market push back up again and then fall off to create a lower peak at the moment this is free fall okay uh, don't count that as a peak that peak's equal to that peak. I'm not seeing this as lower peaks or lower troughs just yet. All right, so I'm not calling this a downtrending market by any way, means, shape, or form. All right, so at this point of time, we broke through the key level of support here, uh, and you can drag that up easily, probably more towards that sort of 7180. Okay, uh, there's a few patterns that we can see on the chart here. One, there's a little head and shoulders pattern here. Okay, uh, and the other is the double top that's also clearly can be seen on the weekly chart. So if I take that uh, neckline into account, it doesn't really matter which one because you know that's the head and shoulders. You got the double top, same deal. Okay, uh, bring that across to the bottom. Uh, then we're looking at you know a target, looking at that reversal signal, a target for the market at about 6,700. Okay, um, on the futures market last night, we probably got pretty close to it. Okay, uh, so we actually got to pretty close to a 10% correction on the futures when the US was at its worst last night. All right, so that's our market, guys. Look, we're at the next level of support. We're closed tomorrow for Australia Day public holiday. That they are, we're at the mercy of the two new new um, two two US sessions um, between now and Thursday morning. Okay. Um, so look, that's just a technical target. Really, this is running on fear at the moment, and I would say we're more so following fear leads from the US. I have probably more focused on what the US charts are doing compared to really what our charts are doing. Because if the US market recovers, we're just gonna follow regardless of level, right? So look, S&P 500 and NASDAQ are the two US indices that I keep closest eye on. Uh, I like the S&P 500 because it's a good mix of stocks through 500 stocks where the Dow is not, not as diversified. I much prefer the S&P 500. NASDAQ I look at when I wanna get more of a feel of your high growth tech type you know, consumers, uh, discretionary type stocks, okay? Um, all right, so looking at this in P500 at this stage, uh, from, from all time highs down to the lows uh, of last night, we have now fallen 12, well, they have fallen now 12%, okay? So 12%, big move, guys, okay, big correction, all right? But they still haven't broken to the downside yet. I'm not calling this a bear market, okay? Yes, the current trend has broken, the line has broken, but it has not broken this key level of support. It has not shown me lower peaks, lower troughs. I'm not calling this a bear market by any way, shape or means, all right? So look, at this point of time, we've bounced off support. We're coming back near that 200 day moving average. We're at critical levels right now. If this support level breaks, I will be talking a bit differently next week. All right, but for now, technically, I think the S&P 500 has held a very key level. We'll probably come and test that level again, okay? I wouldn't be surprised to see it back down there again, even tonight. I wouldn't be surprised to see it go through it tonight, but ultimately, I think by the time the Fed meets, which is Wednesday night, I think we'll be, uh, there's a high chance we're gonna be back above, and we could be a lot higher um, as well, all right? NASDAQ, same sort of deal. It cracks through one key level here, Back to the next key level. This one's got me a little bit worried, okay? I have to admit. Um, so there is a potential of sort of a lower peak, lower trough, um, but I really want to see on the weekly chart that's showing up as well. This stage just looks like a free fall, all right? Uh, also, you know, um, got a double top pattern that's already played out, okay? So you look at that double top there, all right? Broke to the downside. I think that's pretty much done what it needs to do. 
All right. Coming back across the daily again, let's just uh, get perspective here. Uh, the NASDAQ now from its highs to its lows is falling almost 20%. Stocks are cheap here, right? Now, not to say that all tech stocks in the NASDAQ should go up from here. I think you're going to be a lot more selective this year, guys, if you're going to buy into this uh, pullback. I don't think it's going to be as easy as it has been over the last two years on that COVID recovery. Okay, it was a stimulus-based recovery. It was pretty simple, guys. The government pumping money in, uh, central banks pumping money in. Uh, you just buy equities, hold, sit, and make money, right? Now, we've got to start stock picking again. We've got to get behind the stocks that have been heavily sold down. They're going to perform well over the next few years. That's the key to success now in the markets. We're going to go back, I think, to a bit more traditional value investing. Okay, so, you know, uh, we want high dividend yielding stocks or we want stocks that have got good, solid profit and growth. Okay, not just growth in revenue, but also able to show a profit. All right, um, you know, names like Microsoft come to mind straight away. All right, so that's a probably prime example, a well-known home brand with known Microsoft for a long time. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's been around, it's been proven. Uh, they just brought Activision guys, Blizzard, which is huge, I think, for the gaming world. Uh, huge for the company, I should say, as well. Uh, they're about a 20% discount from where they were only about a month ago, okay, uh, to where they were last night anyway. Back to the 200 day moving average, back on trend. There's a lot of stocks like this, similar examples in the US at the moment that have come back to some very, very interesting levels. Okay, um, so yeah, look, do I see this as a buying opportunity? Hell yeah, right? But I'm very selective in this buying opportunity and I am waiting, I'm waiting for the Fed. I wanna get on the other side of this Fed meeting. So this is just one example of many of stocks that have come off, you know, uh, 15 to 20% uh, good long-term value stocks that you wanna be behind. Whether you wanna throw this in the growth basket, you can if you want, um, but Microsoft is a good company to get behind at the right level. Now, I'm not saying that the selling is done. By any means, we're gonna get on the other side of this Fed meeting and see what the market's reaction is come Thursday morning. All right, so, um, yeah, so back to the NASDAQ. Look, this is key levels, guys. If it cracks through here, then, yeah, we might still see quite a bit more pain to come. Uh, so let's just see, right? I think you're sort of in a situation where we're sitting on our hands just that little bit longer and waiting for this to play out because there's a few things happening around in the background that's not just the Fed. So just to clarify, I'm calling this a market correction. I don't believe at this stage I'm even thinking about calling this a bear market, okay? In all market corrections, we don't know where the bottom is, guys. Sometimes it's 6%, 8%, 10%. Definition is 10%, but sometimes it's 12 sometimes it's 15 The NASDAQ, right, tends to do a lot more than the S&P 500 does. There's no rules to this, guys, okay? What's happening essentially is the herd is selling, right? So it's a herd, uh, it's a fear, fear mongering. It's not, I don't think this is based on fact, right? Um, yes, the NASDAQ stocks got a bit overheated through COVID and the COVID recovery. I agree with that. Uh, were they a bit expensive? Yes, absolutely. And when stocks get expensive, guess what? They correct. And that's what they're doing now. At, at the bottom of all corrections, whether it doesn't matter how much that correction ends up being, and I'm trying to predict how much it will be, um, there's generally a good buying opportunity. All right. So let's weigh that up for a second. Let's just sort of rationalize this a little bit. I don't blame people for selling right now. I don't blame people for taking profit, especially ahead of a Fed announcement and especially of how negative some of the press has been around interest rates. You've had many of the large um, Wall Street uh, analysts come out and say that they expect interest rates to go up more than four times this year from the Fed. Okay, um, that creates a lot of uncertainty in people's minds and in environments where interest rates shoot up, really high unproven proven growth stocks underperform value. Okay, so once again, I don't blame the markets for falling off a bit here. Okay, um, but it, it does get to a point where People are just selling because other people are selling, if you know what I mean. That herd mentality comes in. And I feel that's what's taking over a bit here. Now, 
we see this all the time and I always say this to everybody, all my clients that I talk to, okay, um, 90% of these big 10% corrections are fantastic buying opportunities. It's the GFC situations, it's the big ones that you get like the COVID pullback where the markets fall 50% um, where things get really dangerous, okay? And you've got to be careful not to pick the bottom. All right, so what's the difference between buying in at the bottom and picking the bottom, okay? We use technical analysis to help us identify the bottom. And when we do that, we slowly get back into the market, guys, okay? We don't just go and put all of our capital in all at once, okay? We'll buy a little bit, get a bit more confirmation. Buy a little bit more, get a bit more confirmation. And the fantastic thing about current, current um, brokerage prices and things like that, it doesn't matter how big account you've got, you got you can do this now, right? So don't just blindlessly buy because things have fallen. Wait for them to find the bottom. Wait for the for some technical signals to suggest the support's being held, the market momentum shifting back to up again. Wait for other people to buy, right? Be be, be part of the herd. Okay, just don't get in too late and don't get in too early, right? It's, 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 it's a lot <laughs> easier said than done, okay? I get that. But just be patient, get on the other side of the Fed, and let's just see where we're at from there. All right, so what's all this co commotion about? What's triggered this off? Well, there's a number of things, guys, that I'll put this down to. One is interest rates. There's too many, like, like this all started really three weeks ago when we saw the Fed minutes, right? That's That was that first bit of volatility that kicked back into the market for the year. From there, it's just snowballed, okay? There's just been negative press after negative press after negative press out there from all these different analysts and traders suggesting that this could be the next big crash because of the Fed. It's complicated, isn't it, guys? Like, let's think about this for a second. In the past, increasing interest rates has been a positive thing for markets. It means the economy is strong, okay? Uh, things are kicking forward, and, you know, we have to increase interest rates to slow things down, but that has a very long slowing effect, okay? Um, so you're generally bullish economically if you're increasing interest rates, right? But this time around, things are a little bit different. OK, um, they're talking about increasing interest rates to battle an inflation problem. Now, an inflation problem can often happen when you do have a strong economy. Right. And the thing is, though, how strong is the economy right now? I don't know if that's really black or white right now, considering everything that's been going on with COVID for the last two years. So we're in uncertain times. Right. We've had a lot of stimulus that have held, that's held the, the economy up. But we don't really know how well the economy will hold up with all this stimulus pulled away. Okay, we can see bond markets are still healthy. There's no big problem there. The Fed's you know slowing down on the bond buying. I'm going to complete all that this year. We're still not seeing any big problems in the bond markets, guys. Okay, yes, we've seen some some of the bond yields rise, which means people are selling out of bonds, but that's natural when you believe interest rates are going to go up. We're not seeing any fear selling in, in the bond market. We're not seeing any cracks or problems or issues. Okay, all we're seeing is people taking a view that inflation is a problem and that the Fed's going to increase rates to correct that problem. Are we using the right tool to fix this problem is the question here, right? And this is the one thing I want everyone to think about, okay? What's going to happen when we start, if the Fed starts increasing rates rapidly this year, uh, stops bond buying and starts running down their balance sheet? What if they do all of that this year, okay? All at once. It's not going to be great for the economy, is it? Right. As we're trying to get back on our feet after COVID, it's probably not the right time to go too aggressive. All right. Is it going to solve the inflation problem? Where's the inflation problem really coming from? Well, from what I'm hearing, what I believe is most of the supply chain. We had a deflationary issue before COVID kicked in, which means that we were trying to get inflation up. We couldn't get it to budge. They threw everything at it. Inflation would not rise. Okay. But now, Inflation's going up because, not because the economy is strong, okay, not because we've got huge, huge uh, employment and all that sort of thing. No, no, it's all mainly because of supply chain problems. A lot of it's coming from energy and oil prices coming back up. So you remember crude got down to, well, crude futures got below zero at one stage, right? So what happens when something goes from 10 to $80? a barrel when when oil goes from 10 to 80 dollars a barrel of course inflation is going to spike 
okay? So you've got a supply chain problem out there. It's not just energy, it's going across food in the US, it's going through a few different, you know, a lot of building materials and things like that. So yes, slowing down the economy will help inflation, but what are you gonna do to the economy in the meantime? Now, the Fed itself has not said that they're going to increase rates four times this year. Let's see what they say, okay? So, and that's the big thing. It comes down not to what the Fed does tomorrow night. The Fed will probably increase interest rates a quarter percent. I think the, mar the market will like the Fed increasing interest rates by a quarter of a percent. What the market, I think, really wants to hear is a plan. What's the Fed planning to do this year at this point of time? And what's the caveats within that plan? So if the, the Fed comes out and says, look, we'll probably increase rates maybe three times this year. At this stage, that's what we feel is needed. Uh, we'll assess the runoff of the balance sheet later this year. And these are the things that we're basing our decisions on. Inflation, the strength of the economy, employment, rah, 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 their normal, normal spiel. Something like that. Nothing too hawkish, nothing too dovish, something a little bit fence sitting, but with a bit of a plan, the market will lap it up and recover, right? Um, if they're too hawkish, I think the market might get spooked. If they're too dovish, I don't think the market's going to be happy either, right? But I think they should increase interest rates just to send a message to people to chill out a little bit. Um, but also send the message that we're not going to go too hawkish or too aggressive in the face of um, what's happening with Omicron and in the face of what everything else is going on. And just at least recognize still that there's a supply chain problem out there that's causing this issue. All right. Solve the supply chain problem. Most of this goes away. And that could go once, in, once, once, uh, once COVID gets back under control a little bit. So let's talk about that. So the current Omicron wave is losing steam, okay? So yes, uh, it has increased week on week worldwide. It went from 21 million cases the week prior to about 23 million cases last week. That is a much slower increase in weekly cases than what we've seen for a long, long time. We went from 5 million cases a week worldwide at the beginning of this wave, and we're now at 23 million. That was a massive increase, more than double some weeks. Now, the measly, uh, you know, 2 million extra cases. This is suggesting, and it's too early to call, it is suggesting we could be finding a top. A lot of analysts are talking a top is coming in February. If this tops, I think the mood's going to ease a little bit out there. I think we've got a combination of things that are working against each other, right? We've got a massive increase in cases that's causing staffing issues and problems in businesses, supply chain issues, okay? That's what this, this spike of cases are happening. And at the same time, you've got a bunch of analysts out there talking about interest rate hikes. Wrong time to be talking about interest rate hikes, guys. Not in the middle of a bloody wave, right? Wait for the wave to calm down. Wait for inflation just to sort of chill out a little bit on the back of that. I don't know, but now's not the bit time to be calling interest rates, okay? So this is the, this is the dynamic that is the problem right now, is the combination of what's happening with COVID and what's happening with the chatter around interest rates. And it's that combo together that's lethal, okay? Um... The other thing, obviously, there's a few other things rolling around in the background. We've got issues in China. Their economic growth has plummeted. Their GDP figures came in a little bit better than expected, but much lower than the previous reading. Uh, we've got issues in their real estate markets, okay? Um, so what we're hoping for out of China is more news around uh, easing monetary policy and things like that to help them out. So China's a whole other issue. We've got Russia, Ukraine playing out in the background too. Um, but at this point of time, I think that's just adding to the negative sentiment rather than causing the negative sentiment, if that makes any sense. Um, so, what I'm trying to say is basically, I don't think that's the cause of the crash. I think that's just adding to the negative sentiment we're seeing in markets right now. All in all, most of these issues are temporary issues. I still feel the inflation, although it could be around for another 12 months, is still transitory. It is linked to uh, this whole COVID situation. When we get on the other side of this COVID situation, we continue to get uh, high vaccination levels and we stop locking down countries and locking down cities and, um, you know, we stop having mass staff away at all at once. It's causing shortages. Once all that gets cleaned up and we get our supply chains cleaned up, that inflation problem will fix itself. 
okay? In the meantime, we expect a lot of volatility to happen in markets and around chatter from the Fed and interest rates, okay? Ultimately, we still think this will be a bullish year. We still believe we'll see some, some movement back up again. Uh, suspect the XJ will see an all-time high again at some point this year um, but for now we've got a lot of nervousness okay last but not least and I'll wrap it up and I'm sorry this is a long video there's a lot to talk about we're in the middle of an eight US reporting season some of the US banks missed a little bit on expectations which upset the market a little bit too uh, we saw Netflix that upset the market last week uh, with weak subscriber numbers but beat on revenue and earnings estimates. Uh, so we've seen a bit of a mixed reporting season so far. There's also been some really good strong reports that nobody's talking about, okay? So everything seems to be a bit overshadowed right now. All news seems to be bad news and that can change very, very quickly. And we suspect that will be the case in a few, it will be as quickly as the end of this week. All right, so that's where we're at with markets, guys. This is a moving target. So please listen in again next Tuesday. Uh, if you need help, please reach out. That's what we're here for, uh, especially for our members out there. You know, just give us a ring. We're here to help, okay? Um, especially in times like now. All I'll say, guys, is stay, stay calm, stay cool, stay collected. At the end of this will be a massive buying opportunity, okay? Whether it be at current levels or another five or so percent lower, I can't call the bottom just yet, guys. You know, the technicals aren't there, um, but there will be a massive buying opportunity, whether you're buying stock or trading the way back up, okay? There's some great opportunity in these corrections, okay? All right, I'll leave you there. Thanks for listening in uh, and take care. Bye for now.